So, I went out into the, uh, the local flea market today and I found this. So this is a, an Ottoman um, era coffee grinder. So um, it's about 100, 120 years old or so and basically it's a big long cylinder and at the top you have a, a space where you put your coffee grounds in there. You put the coffee grounds in there, you put the lid on, there's a little handle here and then ideally you grind and grind and grind and then after you're done, oh, it's a bit stiff, then all the grinds drop out the bottom and the ground coffee's in here for you to add your boiling water. Now obviously something old, you can see it's sort of very crudely manufactured, it's all stampings and pressings and stuff, so fairly cheap to make. But I think the attraction is in the, the novelty, the scroll work. So I'm going to see if I can get this back into a, a functioning form. So first thing to do is to sort of clean it up a little bit. It's a little bit greasy, so I'm just going to give it a little, uh, little bit of a soak in soap and water and then uh, rinse that off. See you in a bit. Okay, so I've given the, uh, given the parts a little bit of a wash in warm soapy water. What we're going to do now is we're going to use the power of Coca-Cola. <laughs> it's dreadful stuff this, it really is. So I've got a Coke, two litre bottle of Coke and I've cut the top off just at the top. You know, might as well use the plastic bottle whilst we've got it. And I am going, hopefully, hopefully this will fit. I'm going to put this in there. And you can see that it's foaming very nicely indeed. I'm going to put the, uh, the lid in as well. Put that in there. Jiggle that around so we get a full... I don't think we're going to be able to get the, the cap in. Well, let's see. No, I don't think we're going to be able to get the uh, cap in. So we'll have to do that separately. But anyway, so I'm going to leave that. Let's leave it for an hour or two, I guess and then um, see how we're doing. Right then. Righty ho, so let's have a look. There we go. Oh, that's taken off some of, the, uh, some of the worst and the little coin I put in there as a test piece has come out nice and shiny. Right, so let's Put that in there, and then let's put this piece in, just as the final, final item. Right. A bit more of the coke in. To... There we go. Okay, put the last bit in, and I'll see you again in about an hour again, something like that. Here we've got the different pieces, as I said, this is the container for the finished ground. This is the little handle for the top, still a little bit wet from the dowsing. And here is the main mechanism. So, what we're going to try and do today is... Uh, free up this main mechanism and do here and, and see what we've got inside so I don't have all my tools with me at the moment they're still in transit so it's going to be a case of using what we've got um, so I believe these are the fixings that we have to try and undo that's going to be quite difficult I think to get a grasp on Very, very crude fixing. I'm not actually sure that was doing anything at all. Let's just put that there. Let's try and get a good grip on this one so we don't end off don't end up rounding it off. Ah. 
that is not proving to be very easy. Oops. Here we go, starting to move. But I tell you, my, uh, my apprentice, when I was apprentice, my, my workshop teachers would be extremely unhappy about using a pair of pliers. You know, you should use the right tools for the job. Let's give it a last, let's give it a last grasp, see if I can actually get this off. Otherwise I might have to wait until I've got a, a proper spanner that I can use. No, I'm gonna have to wait to get a spanner for that. Not able to get this little fixing off here. I don't know if you can see it yet. It's, it's a little bit too tight and it's rounding off, so I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna just see if I can, yeah, there we go. That's square, square fixing at the end. That may, way help, may help things. Because you can see that the uh, the grinding mechanism is still free to rotate, but I'm not able to uh, not able to remove it. I still need to get this this fixing off here, this one here. Okay, so I finally managed to get the uh, to get the coffee grinder apart. And let me show you what I found. So. Now, if you remember last time, I had a problem with uh, no, I had a problem here with uh, one of the fixings here, so I couldn't actually get it out. So I ended up having to drill that out. So I've made a little bit of a mess there, which is a shame. But the other fixing came out nicely. So what we've got now are the two sort of brass tubes. I've cleaned them up fairly nicely. There's still a little bit of residue in there, but I'll deal with that later. Um, we've got the cap. Something else I noticed, if you look here a little bit closer, you can see under the rim, you've got this sort of lead or a tin sort of solder. Um, it's actually quite neatly done, but uh, it's interesting, the manufacturing method, you know, this beautiful thing, but I suspect it's some leaded solder there. So we need to be a little bit careful if we're going to use it again about not poisoning ourselves. You can see on the base here as well, similar sort of thing, there's some solder there. There is actually a leak when I was cleaning this with the coke. There's a little leak there that you can just see, but I'm not worried too much about that. But we came to the uh, the really interesting part, or the, the <laughs> interesting if you're a geek like me. So this is the actual grinder, um, and this is a burr type grinder. So even modern coffee grinders are made like this. Um, basically what you have is you have two pieces that are steel. I understand that some of these Historically were made of cast iron, but um, this is definitely steel as far as I can see My metallurgy classes are a long time ago But there's a, quite a few marks here that indicate that it's been worked, you know, with a hammer a smith of some sort I don't think it's been cast, but basically you have a conical gear here um, You can see that there's some See here you can see this sort of star form and some sharp teeth and the grooves that are not etched but are sort of scraped into this cone so the cone sits inside here and then as you turn the handle you know it, uh, it grinds the coffee um, it's really nice it's really lovely I'm hoping to use the original parts you know I could buy some modern burr grinder wheels off a modern coffee maker and try and fit it in but but I reckon that this is in fairly good condition so I'm going to try and clean this up and start incising some of these grooves a little bit deeper um, so deeper on the on the cone here and deeper in the actual collar you can see some of the marks there but they're fairly worn down um, so I'm going to do that try and get them a little bit sharper and then hopefully clean it up generally and put it back together um, show you one other thing so where's my uh, Okay, there's another nice little element here. Well, I'll put it together firstly. So, so this goes in here and you can see 
the elements. So let's put this let's put this uh, together. So you can see the fixing holes are meant to line up there. So let's get this in. That's about right. Okay. Actually, let's pull it out a little. There's a nice little design feature here. See this element here? This has got to fix in as a as a locking tang. And you can see that it's uh, not uniform in width. And that's because if you just slide it in there, it slides very neatly from one side to the other, engages in its grooved rails, and you can't get it out, but it's easy to disassemble if you need to. Or you can't get it out under normal operation. So let's put this in here. Let's put this in here. Got to make sure it comes through the actual hole there. Put this in. Come on, there you go. Nice. That's fitted in there. Put this on. Very nice. This goes in the bottom, and then obviously this goes in the top. Now, what I wanted to show you is you can see there's quite a loose fit here. I want to tighten that up with my 3D printer. I'm going to create a sort of plastic collar to keep that a little bit firmer. And then the same here, you can see here there's quite a loose fit between the shaft of the grinder and the uh, the um, collar here so I'll put some sort of insert in there to tighten that up and the last thing I'm going to do is if we take the end off so you can see here that the the actual grinding wheel is quite it's quite loose there's a screw I've got that goes in here what that will do is actually when you tighten and loosen that screw sorry let me just put that back in not done a very good job there. When you tighten and loosen this screw, it actually affects the size of the grind. So what you really want to do is adjust that screw to get the height between the two burr wheels, to get the distance between the two burr wheels right. And then you want to leave it in place. And what I really want to do is have a spring that will, a uh, compression spring that will push down on that shaft to keep those two wheels uh, at, at that distance apart. So that's going to be my plan. And then, um, We'll see how we go. Anyway, it's looking pretty good. Well, here we are, um, almost at the end of the restoration, and I thought it was time for a prototype run. Um, so I've got all the parts in front of me. Um, 3D printing, I'll show you. Uh, after a number of false starts, I managed to uh, introduce a little collar um, to give some extra support to the grinding shaft. And also, I don't know if you can see here, but in the actual handle, I, uh, I've just put a 3D printed a little insert to take up some of the slack that a hundred years of wear has put on the handle. So, okay, so first thing, we're going to take the, uh, the grinding mechanism, and you can see here the, the part. This should fit on top of here. I, foolishly, I should have marked it with a a directional button or something but yeah you can see that fits in there quite nicely and if you can just see at the bottom there you can see how it fits around the existing the existing element to, to give it some stability really it's a it's a bearing it's a, a solid bearing obviously no roller bearing but such is life so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take the one half of the burr mechanism I've tried to deepen up with my Dremel and file deepen up some of the the, the teeth there and basically what this needs to do is we need to um, firstly we need to, oh let me show you this as well so this is the second half of the burr gear and you can see I hope that I've ground down these and tried to sharpen up the teeth again a little bit so first thing we do is we take the collar for the burr we put in the the other half of the burr gear we then are going to take um, this item here and we're going to slide it in like 
this. Okay, that should fit in nicely. I'll just put in this for the sake of completeness. So this is the screw at the bottom that actually you're meant to screw this in or out to give you the right um, degree of fineness for your coffee. And we're going to place this together in here. Turn that so we can see the little hole there, see them lining up. Got to make sure that that lines up. Maybe if it's not, maybe we've just got to push that across. There we go. Okay, I'll just put this in here as a... Actually, maybe try it on the other side. Maybe a bit tighter on the other side. Let's put it in this one. This is just a temporary fixing. I haven't put a, I need to make a little blast, brass plug to go in there, but good. And you can see at the top, this is why I wanted the, this is why I wanted the additional collar. I wanted it so it will support the shaft as it, as it turns. Okay, so, um, put this in the bottom. So all we have to do to grind our coffee is, now we put that on the top, we put the handle on. And you can see, I hope, that this is a, a much more secure fit now with the insert. And that's it. You can't really see it as of the camera. So what I thought we would do, we'd have a test run. Now, I know this is cheating because, you know, instant coffee is already pre-ground and uh, isn't going to provide the most difficult of grinding tests. But at least it will see if the mechanism is grinding from a, a larger grain to a smaller grain. So let's see anyway. First experimental grinding of coffee. It's, um, we're going to use uh, instant coffee, so it's not really a, a big test. But let's just see. So we've loaded it up with instant coffee. Let's see what we get out. Oh, look, it's coming. It's working. Oh, it's a lot quicker than I expected, too. There we go. So you can see it's quite a fine, quite a fine grind, that. Hey, I think it works. Superb. Right then, almost finished. What we need to do now to finish the rest of the build is I need to find some... Uh, brass screws some pegs to go in here and I need to 3d print a um, 3d print a little sleeve to go in here so I'm not going to get a century old uh, lead solder or anything like that in the coffee grinds but very pleased so far there we go so here we have it moment of truth one reassembled one reassembled uh, Ottoman coffee grinder or rehabilitated some coffee beans let's see how we do um, <laughs> we'll see how we do all right nothing so much oh look <laughs> it's working absolutely superb absolutely super right so I'm gonna put this on now I'm going to uh, grind away for a bit not easy it must be said and then I've got my little glass I've got my boiling water and then in a minute we'll try the coffee well here we are in Tel Aviv just finished the reconstruction or the restoration of the Ottoman coffee grinder and it's time for the first cup of coffee in a hundred odd years I guess out of that particular beast That's good. Cheers.